In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can take a complex logic production and turn it into a flexible, intuitive live performance in Ableton Live. Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're here for the first time, nice to meet you. Uh, my name's Kirsten and I've just written the book Performing Electronic Music Live. Uh, so these video tutorials are actually there to accompany my book but you can obviously also watch them if you haven't read the book. However, if you're interested in all the different things that electronic artists do on stage, please do check out the book which I'm going to link down below in the description. So in this video today I want to look at something that I think a lot of people can empathise with which is, you know, you might sit in the studio, you're going to create a really complicated track, you know, say in Logic or Pro Tools, and you end up with all these stems, all these instruments, software instruments, samples and so on, and it just becomes really difficult to actually perform this kind of thing live, you know, what do you actually do on stage? How can you create a version of your song that's different from the record? How can you show your audience something a little bit new? So. Uh, of course Ableton Live is a brilliant tool for doing this kind of thing um, but in this video I actually want to start from the perspective of what if you have written your track not in Ableton but say in Logic but you want to take it into Ableton to perform live. Uh, so we're going to look at basically um, how can you break down your track into different clips um, to make it all manageable so you don't want too many because you don't want it to get confusing but you still want enough so that you have that flexibility and you can kind of switch things up a bit. Uh, we're also going to look at mapping effects to MIDI controllers and a bunch of other things so make sure to stick around till the end and uh, I will take you through a whole process, a whole procedure of how this kind of thing can be done. For this tutorial I'm going to use my song Tumos as a case study. I've been lucky enough to perform this song in six different countries, at festivals, at games and anime conventions. Um, and basically I've produced this song in Logic but I use Ableton to perform it live. As an audiovisual artist I also make graphics to accompany my music so I'm going to make a separate tutorial about visuals uh, where I kind of talk a little bit more about how I make uh, the graphics uh, and how I integrate them into my show. Um, but I will show you how I'm basically triggering these visuals kind of briefly. At the end of this video I'm going to show you a full performance of this setup uh, but first of all I'm going to show you kind of like a breakdown of all the different things that I'm going to go through. Just a quick disclaimer, uh, this video does assume a basic understanding of both Logic and Ableton but even if you're completely new to both of these things I think you should still be able to sort of roughly get the gist of what I'm talking about. So this is what my setup looks like. This is my MacBook which runs both Ableton Live and Evo Suite which is basically a live visuals plugin. This is an Ovation Launchpad, a controller for triggering clips in Ableton. It's a bit older now but I think it's perfect for what I'm doing. This is a Native Instruments Tractor Control F1 MIDI controller which I'm going to use to trigger one shots and to control some effects as well. This is an Akai MPK Mini MIDI keyboard controller and this is my microphone, a dynamic Sennheiser mic. Normally when I perform in different places I just use the microphone that's provided by the venue but I do use this microphone from time to time as well. So very simply the audio outputs from my MacBook and from my microphone are routed straight into the venue mixer. If I do like a streaming gig I will route them both into kind of a mixing desk that I've got myself. Um, but in either case it means that I've got control over what my music sounds like. So the venue sound technician only needs to balance my voice with the rest of the track. And then my visuals are streamed to the venue screen or projector via HDMI. So in order to create a flexible live show these are the things that I do. Triggering looping clips, playing one shots, controlling randomness with follow actions, controlling live effects, live visuals, and performing live vocals and live keys. Uh, so what I think what I'll do is I'm gonna break this video down into two parts just because otherwise it's gonna end up really long. So in the first part, I'm gonna focus on basically the clips that I'm gonna create and put into Ableton. So just like the raw building blocks of my track. And then I'm gonna cover the whole rest in a separate video um, because I think that, they, that way they'll sort of 
end up at similar lengths. So first I'm going to show you how I've exported sections of music from my original production and then I'm going to show you how to place them in Ableton. So here you can see my Logic project. As you can see there's actually 75 tracks which is a lot and it's pretty much impossible to perform this kind of thing live. You know you can't recreate 75 different sounds at the same time on stage. Now the reason I've got so many tracks is because some of them literally just play like one little sound, one little drum sound. Uh, generally I work with a lot of software instruments, sometimes external analog hardware synths as well. And I've already bounced down a lot of them as audio files here, but it's still not very manageable as a stage performance. Also, um, as you can see in the mix, um, I'm on a different computer, that's why uh, some of my plugins are actually not loading. Um, but, you know, you'll end up setting up complex dependencies between all of the sounds. You've got sidechain compression, maybe you're compressing different elements together. Um, so that makes it even more difficult, you know, if you want to create a live mix of 75 stems that sounds like the record. Uh, it's very, very difficult. Uh, but on the other hand, if you just play back a, a finished track, a finished backing track, and you're not interacting with it, um, that's kind of got other disadvantages potentially in that you obviously then can't change the track or you can't improvise. Uh, which is why I'm going to group them into clips. So as you can see here I've started to colour code my tracks so that I can bounce them down into sort of more manageable smaller building blocks that I can then put into Ableton Live. So all the blue stuff is vocals at the moment. I've got several tracks for the kick just because I process it different in the verses and choruses. I've got my bass further down here. I've got like crashes and booms and that sort of thing in red. So essentially I've started thinking about what things fit together into individual stems. So I colour coded all of the tracks according to which stems they're going to sit in. Uh, you know, alternatively you could also make summing stacks as well. And the other thing that I've done is you can see I've put some markers in at the top which um, stand for the different song sections. So not only have I broken down all of the tracks into um, kind of groups or, or individual stems, uh, but I'm also breaking it down kind of like vertically into the different sections. So all I did was I would just highlight uh, a section and then I would solo all of the stems within that section. You can see at the top I've got my sidechain signal so I would solo that as well. It's a silent kick drum basically. Uh, and then I would just go through the whole track and bounce out every single clip in that same way. So once I've exported my clips from Logic I can drag them into Ableton Live where they're automatically mapped to my launchpad. So if you're completely new to Ableton what you can basically see here is you can see the different tracks. Uh, these are the tracks um, and then within the tracks you've got all the different little audio clips. And it's as easy as just dragging them in from your uh, browser into Ableton. So all you need to do is just double check when you click on one uh, here in the settings warp needs to be on, loop needs to be on and the BPM needs to match the overall song BPM so it should normally detect your BPM fairly reliably minus 135 BPM and it should match the BPM that you have at the top here. So once you've dragged everything into the right places so you can see you've got the different song sections here indicated as horizontal scenes and within each section you've got different tracks, so I've got my high frequency drums, mid frequency drums and so on. Uh, once I've done that I can actually just start performing by simply triggering these clips on my launch pad. So normally what I like to do is I like to have no more than eight different tracks playing at the same time just because my launch pad has got a grid of 8 by 8 buttons so that means that I don't have to scroll around too much to get to the clip that I want to play. Um, and the way that I've broken my track down into different clips is I've got high frequency drums. So things like hi-hats, shakers. I've got mid frequency drums. Uh, then I've got my uh, kind of added elements. Which are also drum sounds. I've got kick drum on this track here. Uh, this is my bass line. 
then these are sort of this is kind of like the music stem so there's kind of all the chords and harmony backing of the track on this uh, track here i've got my backing vocals and then here i've got some like, additional little kind of decorative sounds that sound chip tuny and nice so as you can see the stems are then broken down further into the different song sections i've got my verses choruses and bridge parts um, and they're all represented as different scenes here and uh, it allows me to trigger each new section as a full scene i can let some sections loop for a bit longer or cut across more quickly i can also ensure that the onset of each new section is accompanied by a visible gesture for the audience to see this approach works well for me as muting or unmuting each stem has a significant impact on the energy of the overall track. So for example, I can mute the kick drum and bring it back in. Um, so what you can see is that actually the buttons on this launch pad are glowing according to where there's information on the screen. Um, and the yellow box inside of Ableton shows me kind of uh, what I'm actually looking at on my launch pad. So I can actually scroll around and then the yellow box will move around as well. Um, so the way that it works is uh, I can just press individual clips. And if I want to stop them, I have to press a stop button, which is uh, going to sit inside of like an empty clip slot like this. I can also trigger entire scenes. Um, and it's really as simple as that. Um, if Ableton, for whichever reason, can't find your launch pad, what you can do is you can head here into the preferences and then under link MIDI, you can set up all of your control surfaces. Um, and then what you can do is you can just trigger your clips and play them back. Um, I work with no launch quantization, but if you want to, you can set it up so that the clips actually can only play back on a specific rhythmical beat division. So you've got lots of different options here in your quantization settings. You can also double click on all of your clips and actually set up a specific quantization setting here for that individual clip. But I just press things on time, or at least I try to. So in addition to these looping clips, I've also mapped 16 rhythmical one shots to these 4x4 buttons on my track to control F1. So I've got some drum fills, I've got some impact sounds, some noise rises, and they're not actually inside of my original uh, track, but they're just things that I can add on the fly to add some more interest. Uh, another thing that I sometimes do is that I experiment with follow actions. Um, I don't really normally do that in this track, but I just have added it to this tutorial just to show you what, what's possible. Um, so inside of these mid-frequency drums, what you can see is that it's basically playing, um, it's playing back the different drum sections in a kind of random order. It's kind of moving through these clips by itself, it's deciding when to go to the next one. So if you double click the clip and look at your settings, what you can see here is that inside of the follow actions, you can set up a likelihood for the clip to either play again, for example, or to move to the next clip and I've set this up as a one to four likelihood for that particular clip. So you can actually let some randomness determine, you know, which drum loop plays next or which out of a choice of different loops will play back next. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of the explanation. I'm now going to move on to a full performance video where you can see me triggering the clips, triggering the one shots and also I'm going to do a couple of other things which I will explain in part two of this video series. Uh, so part two is basically gonna cover live effects, mapping, um, how I trigger my visuals in Ableton using Evo Suite. And also it's gonna cover a little bit more about the sort of live vocals and live keys. Uh, I'm gonna upload the second half of this um, within a week or so from now. So um, if you wanna see the second half, please do subscribe to my channel, stay tuned. Also leave a comment down below and let me know what else you're interested in. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to play the full performance now and I will see you next time. Bye!
last one's called Two Horse. Control. Unleash the dragon, let it out. 